On this edition of the Musky Daily, Fire Guts at a Cambridge Restaurant. Campus media groups recognize Sunshine Week. And the Little Muskies head to Columbus in style. Thanks for joining us here on Orbit TV on this St. Patrick's Day 2016. I'm Lindsey Graff. And I'm Matt Triola. Much excitement in New Concord this week. John Glenn Boys Basketball makes their way to the Division II State Tournament today for their matchup at Bay Village in the Final Four. Today, the Little Muskies were sent off in style with limousines taking them on their way to Columbus for the first time in school history while the New Concord community wished them luck. On Tuesday, Storied Rivals Sports Media came to town to host a pep rally at John Glenn High School. Founder and CEO of Storied Rivals, Aaron Sprague, organized and emceed the event. Sprague, a 90, 1997 graduate of John Glenn, said the community should really cherish this time as a whole and the support of the team. Sprague said the, that the guys didn't just wake up and became the team they were, but rather the team has been in the making for years even before the players got to high school. The Muskies entered the game as the number one ranked team in Division II with a 26-1 record, while Bay Village comes in at 24-3. Head coach Greg Woodard believes this is a very special team for the Muskies. It's their commitment, uh, their dedication to each other. They're, they're a very tight-knit group. Uh, they put a lot of time and a lot of effort uh, in the past year in. And uh, the bottom line is we've had some kids that got Clouds of smoke could be spotted miles away from the Cambridge Courthouse on Wheeling Avenue Tuesday night as a nearby restaurant went up in flames. Firefighters consider courtside deli a total loss. Owner Scott Wilson was in shock as he watched his business burn to the ground. The cause of the fire is still unknown. The state fire marshal investigated the scene today, but it could be weeks before the cause is determined. 30 firefighters from three departments were on scene Tuesday night to tame the flames and an overnight crew remained through Wednesday morning, putting out hot spots. Buildings connected to the de deli, built in 1881, were spared major damage because of a firewall resting between the structures. According to Cambridge, yeah, Fire Chief Jeff Davis. Stop the progression Davis. of the fire into the next building. Uh, if you look at some of the, any of these downtown buildings you see here, a lot of them have a common attic, meaning it's all one attic. Okay. So if we get fire up, it, it races through the whole building. So the guys, you know, like I said, the guys did a real good job of getting stopped. Chief Deeks was heard speaking to the owner, questioning where he would get his Reuben sandwich now. The American Red Cross was also at the scene providing water and coffee to the firefighters and police officers responding to the incident. Student Senate is hoping to raise $5,000 for the Zanesville Animal Shelter by mid-April. Students can also donate items such as toys, blankets, leashes, and other supplies the shelter may need. Muskegon University's coordinator of student involvement, Jess Edge, says that she will shave her head if the donations reach the goal of $5,000. Volunteers' work will also be counted and is equivalent to a $5 donation. Several upcoming campus events will allow students to make toys and blankets to the donate to the the cause. It's a big concert year here at Muskingum with the big reveal scheduled for tomorrow. Muskingum University started narrowing down choices for this year's concert in the fall with a poll on OrgSync where students could vote for their favorite genre. Co country was the genre that won and several country artists were then listed in a new poll including David Nile, Kelly Pickler and more. Easton Corbin was the artist with the most votes in the end but the official headliner won't be known until Friday. We'll be taking a short break on the Musky Daily. Don't go anywhere because when we return, we'll be taking a look at some of the events happening on campus in honor of Sunshine Week. We'll be right back. We have the music. <laughs> we have the cameras. We have the talent. Orbit Media, where the magic happens. On the story. On the quad. On the scene. This is the Muskie Daily.
The Campus Media Group is joining journalists across the country in celebrating Sunshine Week. The week is a national initiative designed to promote dialogue about open government and freedom of information. Obert Media is creating conversation this week with a series of special events, broadcasts, and publications, including the ver this very show. This Friday's edition of the Black and Magenta is entirely devoted to Sunshine Week. Be sure to pick it up and learn more. New Concord's police and fire chiefs came to campus Monday to inform a group of reporters about their rights as journalists and how they interact with officers on a daily basis. Fire Chief Brent Gates taught students how to listen to scanners and react to emergency situations that they hear over the radio. Police Chief Trevor Hayes informed the journalists about the community events his department puts on and how reporters can get involved. Because of sunshine laws, New Concord Village Council meetings are open for the community. Meetings are held the second Monday of every month. Charlotte Colley, New Concord Village Administrator, attempts to get the public more involved in the community meetings by getting them out the agenda out early. She says that it is important for the community to come to meetings because council members aren't always able to hear all the different perspectives on certain issues. All Village Council meetings are open to the public then, but the executive sessions meetings will be outlined in Ohio Revised Code. Students experiencing car trouble or who feel unsafe on campus are encouraged to call Muskingum University Campus Police. The University Police offer several services, including giving rides to injured students. Chief of Police Danny Vincent also encourages students to call if they feel unsafe walking around campus. If you're afraid, it's dark. If you come out of class or out of the library from studying and it's you were in there later than you thought and it's dark and you don't feel comfortable walking, call University Police. We'll pick you up and take you back to your dorm. Campus police are also able to unlock or jumpstart cars and will call a towing company free of charge if they can't solve the problem themselves. We're going to take a, a short break, but when we come back, Chris will have your weather and sports update. We have the music. We have the cameras. We have the talent. Orbit Media, where the magic happens. On the story. On the quad, on the scene, this is the Muskie Daily. The weather started out pretty promising for the early part of this week, but unfortunately it won't be that way for much longer. Tonight, skies will be partly cloudy with a low around 37 degrees. Tomorrow's weather will be mostly sunny with a high near 56. It'll be very windy with gusts as high as 24 miles per hour. And tomorrow night, expect it to be partly cloudy with a low around 29 degrees. Now let's take a look at your extended forecast. This is Will Mullins, and I want to encourage you to watch Chapel on Orbit TV Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. Thanks. Find out what decisions are being made at Student Senate that could affect your campus organization by tuning into Orbit TV on Tuesdays at 11 in the evening, and again on Wednesday through Sunday at 10 in the morning and 6 and 11 in the evening. Muskie women's lacrosse got back on track in big-time fashion Wednesday night, downing Waynesburg 18-8. The 18 goals smashed the school record for most goals in a game in the program's young history. Ball control was the plan once again for the Muskies, as the team took 35 shots in the game. 
Ashley Adams broke out of her slump with a game-high six goals in the game, setting a new career high for her. Paige Waterman chipped in with a career-high four goals as well. The Muskies now stand at an even 3-3 three and three on the season and will return home on Sunday for a matchup against Transylvania. Men's lacrosse secured their first road win in program history Wednesday night, defeating Hiram 12-10. Ian McGugan led the way for the Muskies with four goals on the night, while Philip Dappen recorded 13 saves in net. Joe Zabo added a career-high three goals in his first career hat trick as well. The, men, the win brings the Muskies back to even at 2-2 two and two with their next game coming on Saturday against Hope. Muskie softball hopes to have the luck of the Irish with them today as they go on the road to Ohio Wesleyan for a doubleheader tonight. This is the first game for the Muskies since the Rebel Spring Games in Florida over spring break. Amy Clark currently leads the Muskies with a 417 batting average, while the senior duo of Sarah Browning and Kristen Gill leads a very talented pitching staff. It's been schedule changes aplenty for the Muskie baseball team this week. First, the home opener against Pitt Greensburg was postponed until April on Wednesday. Now more changes have been announced for the Muskingum Invitational this weekend. The Muskies will now open up with a doubleheader against Alma tomorrow, with Game 1 starting at 1 in the afternoon. Then they will play Penn State Barron at 3.30 on Saturday. Coming up, find out about what is happening at places like Wallhouse Hotel and John Glenn Gym tomorrow night. Stay updated on decisions being made on campus by tuning in to Student Senate here on Orbit TV. Student Senate meetings air every Tuesday at 11 in the evening and Wednesdays through Sundays at 10 in the morning and 6 and 11 in the evening. A team led with experience, reporters forged from ethics, and a crew dedicated to bringing the knowledge. This is the Muskie Daily, the number one rated college television broadcasters in New Concord. Aaron and Matt are back with more cinematic features. Tonight they give a one minute review on Marvel's Daredevil Season 2 trailer. Daredevil Season 2 drops this Friday, March 18th. All 13 episodes on Netflix. Super stoked. Going to see The Punisher for the first time. I'm really interested to see what his character is going to bring to the show. It's really interesting because they're saying society made this crazy villain. Yeah, it's really fascinating. We're also going to see a new character, Elektra. We don't really know her relationship to Daredevil, besides the fact that they've had previous romantic history, maybe. Maybe. And then, of course, there's the mysterious hand, a bunch of ninjas, it and looks the like. the hand. We don't really know who the main villain is right now, but that's yeah, part of the that's excitement. Part of so. You know, we didn't even know Fisk was the villain for a while in season one, so. Yeah, I think we did. But yeah, lots of conflicts going on in Daredevil season two. It's going to be very exciting, very dramatic for sure. Love the tone of the trailers a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe really stoked. Yep. And anyway, that's One Minute Review. We'll be binge watching this weekend. Hope you do too. I'm DJ Ace. And I'm Tree. Have a great week. Equality Alliance will be hosting its annual drag show tomorrow night. There will be performances by both professional drag artists and amateurs. The show will take place in John Glenn Gym at 8. Tomorrow night, students have an opportunity to gain experience in professional networking while sampling a variety of beer. At the Wallhouse Hotel in New Concord, students are given the chance to engage in different activities and build conversation skills to promote professional networking. The event starts at 6 o'clock and ends at 8. Join the ladies of FAD this Friday night for their annual green party and a belated St. Patrick's Day celebration. The event takes place in Kelly Coffeehouse from 8 to midnight. And of course, traditional green beer is offered for all who are 21 and older. Bring your IDs because they are getting to be required. Thank you for joining us here on this edition of the Muskie Daily. Make sure to pick up the special sunshine edition of the Black and Magenta tomorrow. Enjoy your St. Patrick's Day weekend, Muskies.